Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, or whatever time of day it is for you when you're watching us, because we come on in the morning. We come on at 6 o'clock in the evening, and we come on at 1 a.m. for you late-nighters like me. Today is going to be a day of running back and talking about and visiting with some of my favorite guests, and um, sadly, Two of those very, very favorite guests, Earl Thomas Conley and Charlie Pride, have gone on to be with the Lord, but I'm very, very thankful to Hilda Thomason, who is the head honcho at the Georgia Mountain Fair. The Georgia Mountain Fair is about to happen again, so y'all get ready, get your tickets, make plans to be there and enjoy music, food, walking, crafts, um, all kinds of things, displays, the old mill and, and just the, so many things that they're showing the blacksmith shop it's going to be so much fun this year is going to be probably the best that the georgia mountain fair has ever had because they had that year off and now more than ever people are ready to come back so today we're going to share some of that we're going to share our visit with earl thomas conley we're going to share our visit with charlie pride and we're going to take you to one of my favorite daycations and lately I did a vacation on Saturday, y'all. I went to Rome, Georgia. Now, everybody who's really close and really tight with me knows that I have a 20-mile radius. And 20 miles, I'm safe and secure. Over 20 miles, and I get kind of weird. Well, it's over 20 miles to get to LJ every day, so I'm like, ah! But this weekend, we went over to Rome, and downtown Rome was Packed. It was absolutely, there wasn't a parking place on either side of the road all the way down. But I have to give Rome the award for the most beautiful crepe myrtles I have ever seen in my life. They were absolutely outstanding. And so it gave me a little bit of a, uh, you better Google and find out what's wrong with yours because they're not blooming. So it was crazy. Theirs were absolutely gorgeous and full and brilliant. And, and I took some beautiful pictures and I hope you saw those on my Facebook page. And speaking of Facebook, um, if you are not on Facebook with us, please join us on Facebook, but also know that from Facebook, you can connect to all the many, many programs that Tim is posting of Heart of the Home on YouTube. And you can go to YouTube and you can watch the old program starting here at ETC way, way, way long ago. Actually, in 2009 is when we started posting programs on YouTube and they're still there so if you have some of your friends who are guests if you were a guest you can go back and you can see those programs now you can also see the interviews with um, some of the musicians that we've done like you know it's so sad because we lost a couple of the tapes here they broke and one was Billy Joe Royal who passed away and that just not Billy Joe Royal yeah Billy Joe Royal and um, absolutely broke my heart and and we just it's one of those things it happens. Sometimes in technology, things happen. So the idea that we have this old footage is really cool to me because Charlie Pride is gone. He's gone to be with the Lord. And actually, sadly, he had COVID and Earl Thomas Conley, but sadly, he had dementia. And so today we're going to share some of that with y'all, and I'm excited about it. I've been off for 10 days, but I have really not been off at all. I've been working like a crazy woman in real estate and uh, very, very excited. The market is beyond crazy and we are planning lots of big things happening in the near future and very thankful for all the buyers who are coming in from everywhere. Right now, I'm looking for a very special piece of land and I hope that one of my viewers may have something they wanna sell. I need between 10 and 20 acres and I know that we're in the mountains. I get that I sell mountain property. But this family wants a little bit of flat land with some mountains too. 15, 10 to 15, 20 acres, somewhere around there. And it could be Pickens or Cherokee County. They really don't want to go further than that because of their family and where their family lives. So, so if you have some land you'd like to sell, I would love to come and look at it because I have looked in four counties trying to find exactly what they want. It's been very, very hard. So if you have some land that I don't know about, pick up the phone and call me. And everybody knows my phone number. It's 404-375-0590. All right, sad things are happening and our communities are losing some precious, precious people. Um, this week, First Baptist Church of Ball Ground and the town of Ball Ground 
said goodbye to a very, very, very special lady, Miss Mary Lois Holcomb Blaylock, went to be with the Lord on July the 4th. And um, what a special, special lady. I loved, I sat behind her in church, and she would always walk in and come over and pat me on the shoulder, pat me on the back, just precious, precious lady. She babysat a lot of the kids in ball ground, and she was just a wonderful, wonderful lady. So it's, it's sad to have had to say goodbye to her, but what a precious, precious lady. And also, um, for the folks who worked in the Royston community and the Royston family, you know, um, lately they lost Mike Densmore and the Donald Allen had worked there in the past. And Donald Allen, sadly, um, was diagnosed with cancer and made it just a couple of days. I mean, it's just, it's been crazy. And that's what happens. We have to live our life to the fullest. We have to live our life every single moment enjoying it. And I really enjoyed Saturday. And I really stirred up some stuff with y'all because I ordered, Vicki and I went to Chili's over in Rome and I ordered the prettiest steak you ever saw. And then I said, they said, could we get you anything else? And I said, where's the ketchup? And I just coated that steak and ketchup and I thought people on Facebook were gonna flip out on me. They're like, ah, you don't do that to a steak. You don't do that to a steak. And I said, yeah, you do. That steak was fantastic before I put ketchup on it, but it was really fantastic with ketchup on it. So boy, I stirred up a hornet's nest. But get out every single day and do something you love. Um, it was so weird that we ended up in Rome. We went to look at a beautiful property, a 4,400 square foot house, absolutely gorgeous, but it didn't quite suit what our buyers needed. So we said, well, we're already almost to Rome, so let's just go to Rome. And we went over there and it's where my grandparents were from. It's where we spent a lot of time as children, and I really, really enjoyed the day. So take a daycation. Take my word. When you get back from that daycation, you will just kind of sit down in your chair and relax and remember and think about. It was only an hour away, and we had an absolute blast. So um, get out and do a daycation. Now, we have to say thank you to all the sponsors who did the fireworks for Fannin County because, oh my gosh, that was an amazing scene, an amazing sight, and it was wonderful that ETC has been able to share that with everybody. It's also been rebroadcast, and through the month of July, it will continue to be rebroadcast. So if you didn't get to see it, you need to see what it took to put that together, and it took a lot of sponsors, a lot of money, a lot of time and energy, but it was fantastic. I've been watching fireworks since I was a kid when we'd go to Stone Mountain with Mom and Daddy and, and when we go to Orlando to Disney World. I've seen some of the best fireworks displays ever. But Fannin County, you nailed it. It was absolutely amazing. So thank you to all of those sponsors. And thank you for allowing ETC to be a part of that because uh, it was just fantastic. And I have to tell you, because we live at the foot of where the ball ground fireworks are. We just kind of walk out in the yard and look up and there they are. We're a bit spoiled, but to be able to sit in the recliner in ball ground, Georgia and watch Fannin County, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome. So thanks again to ETC. All right, it is Christmas in July in Jasper, July the 17th. From 8 to 2, the Pickens County Thrift Store will have in their back parking lot a big, huge tent sale. And this is at 110 Samaritan Drive, and it is going to be fantastic finds, great prices, fun for everyone, games and toys for kids, free food, live music, prizes, and meet Santa. Now, I'm telling you, if I'm Santa and they're putting me in a red woolly outfit in the dead of summer, I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be an angry Santa. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? But don't forget, July the 17th, and this is from 8 to 2 p.m., and you want to be a part of that? So, see Santa? He's got on his beach clothes there, and my, my Angela loves Santa. She had a beach Santa in her bedroom, so that's pretty, pretty cool. But please be a part of that and know that the every dime raised at the Pickens County thrift store has gone for so many projects, so many worthwhile things in Pickens County, and it's just amazing. Everybody knows it's a, a love of a wonderful gentleman who went on to be with the Lord, but yeah, you want to do that. Now, if you're moving into the area and you don't know that ETC happens to have the best Wi-Fi ever, you just need to pick up the phone and call our offices at 706-253-2271 and say, hey, I'm moving from Ackworth 
and I need to get the best you have. That's what I told my buddy Evelyn and she got ETC services. That's what we need. We need to let folks know that if you're looking for a package deal, if you're looking for great Wi-Fi, if you're looking for just a home phone, whatever you're looking for, ETC can serve the needs of the community. So pick up the phone again and call 706-253-2271. Okay, I had a vacation to Rome. I had a vacation to Keys Jewelry down in Canton. And I gotta tell y'all, oh my gosh, it was so funny. We pulled up and um, it was raining and you know this old curly hair you can't get out in the rain so we're sitting in the car and we're looking around and I remembered shopping at Worley's shoe store they're gone Kessler's they're gone Jones's department store they're gone everything is gone that used to be in downtown Canton except for Keys jewelry and I've had millions of compliments on the ring that they made for me um, the sherry ring and I absolutely love it and Saturday took a couple of friends down there with me and um, they did something very special for us for an elderly lady that I'm helping take care of and uh, it, was, it was precious so thank you very much to them. That's what local businesses that are about. That's what local businesses mean. It means that a family that you have known and trusted for over 60 years and we have so many businesses in our area who withstood the test of time. They made it through the crisis, they made it through that mess we had all last year they made it through the economic downturn of 2008, and they are still your local businesses. And we want to encourage you to please support, to shop, to eat, to stay within our boundaries from who we serve. And, and tell those local businesses thank you. You know, we had a waiter in Rome that actually waited on us, and we told him thank you for being here today. And he said, yeah, did you see the sign on the door? We have to close early today because we don't have enough staff. There are still people sitting at home drawing checks for doing nothing. Get out and go to work. Everybody is hiring. Every factory is hiring. Every store is hiring. Everybody is hiring. Even the gas stations are hiring. And don't even get me started about that because I just filled up and I might say I was an angry, angry woman when I filled up today because the gas was ridiculous. But it is what it is. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to share some of my favorite memories, and this is compliments of Hilda Thomason. If she were not doing the magic that she does at Georgia Mountain Fair, we would never have been allowed to um, meet and spend time with Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin brothers, Charlie Pride, Earl Thomas Conley, John Conley, Janie Fricky. Uh, so many people that we were able to sit down and spend time with and get to know them one-on-one. -on -one. Connie Smith, I think about what a lifelong dream because as a kid, I used to listen to Cincinnati, Ohio all the time and, and I just loved her music. And the idea that we've been able to interview them because they come right here to these beautiful Georgia mountains. So we're gonna take a break and when we come back, we're gonna visit a little bit with Earl Thomas Conley. Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome Blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. ATC knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact ETC. Connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. 
For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Welcome to the Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds. We are in beautiful, beautiful Hiawassee, Georgia. Now, I came here listening to a song called Smoky Mountain Memories, and I found the man responsible for this song when I got here, Mr. Earl Thomas Conley. Yeah, I gave you a little different version tonight. You did. Now, let's <laughs> talk about, this is a 1974 song? Yeah. And you don't usually do it in your program? No, we don't. No, we, we've changed so many band members and stuff, and we used to do it all the time. I've got a whole bunch of stuff I got to get back into the show, but let's talk about the writing of that song. Yeah, I wrote it with Dick Hurd. Uh, he had a false name, Richmond Devereaux, <laughs> or something uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. Anyway, he passed away a few years back, and um, invited me. I was living in Huntsville, and I don't know if I had any good ideas for songs. And I just gave him this idea, and we sat there and wrote it and everything. And then I got and Mel Street recorded it. Whose and version do I like the best? Yours. Pardon me? I like your version better. Do you? I've listened well, to it. You didn't tonight, though. Tonight. <laughs> I didn't like tonight, my version at all. Tonight well, I couldn't was remember. One of those nights. We do I'll have to you. say, you've got the flu. You've oh, the stuff is just makes you crazy. Yeah. Er. <laughs> but, but great performance. Well, thank um, you. Love Angel in Disguise. You do. So many number one songs. Now, let's talk about that. I got 21, more. 21 number one songs? All together. Then we had, I don't know how many top tens, but. We had more number ones than, than we had top tens because shortly after I got started, I started having number ones. So we went out and found the best. If By the time I got started real good, about holding her and loving you, I ran out of my own songs. And uh, Robert Byrne and Walt Aldridge and a bunch of boys from Muscle Shoals. I used to go to Muscle Shoals all the time and do demos and work with those guys over there when I was living in Huntsville. 
And so they caught on to uh, my style and wrote songs for me. So I had a whole bunch of them in a row that they wrote. Your style is very unique. Yeah, Today, it is just as it was 20 years ago? Yeah, well, let's see. The last thing I recorded was uh, 91 with Keith Whitley. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when it went to number one. Now, what's that one called? Brotherly Love. Brotherly Love. Yeah. Did he live to see that released? No. No. No, he, no, he didn't make it that long. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and we're going to go to some of your music, because right. we led into this with my favorite song, Smoky Mountain Memories. Now we're going to go to the one that Keith didn't live to see released. Um, did it go to number one? Yeah. Do you think um, tonight when you did that, does it bring back memories of him? Yeah. Sometimes you want you feel like crying up yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. Especially if the crowd's real good. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and we're going to go to that song and let our audience hear that. Cool. And maybe some of them will remember this song. Number one, uh, written by who? Oh, now, that, now you ask me a hard question. I, I know their names, but it's more than one person. Two or three guys, I think. Great song. And we, did, we didn't record it at the same time. We did. I did my piece while he was on the road, and he came in and finished it up when he, when he got in off the road. So. Oh wow! Well, tonight we're going to show him a version of you and your band tonight doing this song. There you go. Now, who sang Keith's part tonight? Mike Powell. Mike Powell. Let's go to the song. The banjo Brother and Man mandolin player. Uh huh. We saw that. <laughs> Guitar we saw guy. That. Let's go to some great Earl Collins music. <laughs> Welcome back. You just got to hear tonight's live version of Keith Whitley's song. Um, is that one of your favorites? Yeah. Keith was one of my favorite people, too. Mm -hmm. And he was how old when he passed away? 
How old? How old was he? 40? I don't know. Was he about 40? <laughs> we never did check each other's age or anything out. He was, I know he was awful young. Awful young. Yeah, what an was, amazing talent. Oh. What an amazing talent. Own worst enemy, I guess. Yep. Now let's talk about your travels. Um, where will you go this year and where can people find you? I'm going to go to Oklahoma and Texas next. Are you going to be with B.J. Thomas? Yeah. I, I think it's Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Durant, Oklahoma, I believe. How do you know all that? You know more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised <laughs> I have to, I have to know check with you. you to find out what I'm supposed to be doing. That's right. That's right. Uh, we worked with him down in Alabama here a couple years ago, I guess, and uh, it was a real good show, a bunch of, bunch of people. Well, my favorite B.J. Thomas song is Billy and Sue, so when you see him, tell him to do it and send it back to Georgia for me. There you go. <laughs> he has a lot of good stuff, but he's like you. There's always that one song. Now, when you step on stage, what is the one song everybody wants to hear? It's changed some over the years, but Holding Her and Loving You's been, oh, yes. been a steady one. Oh, yes. That is a great song. Tonight, I stood behind the curtain watching men in the audience sing that song. And been I there. love that. Yeah. I, I think that. some men out there have been there, done that. Yeah. Cheater, cheater, cheater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not good. No. Okay, let's talk about your band. Do you have members that have been with you a while? The piano player has been with me. He's well, amazing. actually, the, Mike Pyle, the guy that done that helped me with Brotherly Love, has been with me about 14, 15 years, I mm -hmm. guess. And John's next. He's been with me uh, a little less time than that. And then Dan over on the right place, of the lead guitar from Des Moines, he's been with me the third longest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the drummer's new. He did a good job tonight. And I forgot, I used to, was forgetting his name. I, they got to work with me for a while before it comes to you what, what their name is. Now, what about your bus driver? How did he end up singing? Uh, he's always done it. He's up from up in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. And him and his brothers had bands and stuff. And I was lucky enough to run into him here a few years back. I mean, he's the best driver. You can sleep. I don't care what kind of road it is. Mm -hmm. He is so good as a driver and a great singer, too. Yeah, he, he did a good job tonight. We got a little footage of him, and we're going to show a little bit of that. Right now, we're going to take a break, and we're going to go to another song. I think I want to do, uh, what is my favorite? I kind of like Angel in Disguise. Do you like that song? Yeah, I wrote it. Love that song. Me and Randy Scruggs wrote it. Love that song. Let's go to one of my favorites. Not my favorite now. Smoky Mountain Memories is my absolute favorite. But we're going to let it's you gonna get It's going to think you're cheating on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get a little taste of a little bit of different music by you because Good. you've done some fast. You've done some old. You've done some stuff about cheating. You've done some stuff about being faithful. You did a great one tonight. We're going to go to in just a minute. But right now, we're going to Angel in Disguise. <laughs>
we're back. Okay, ladies, you know a lot of angels in disguise in this world today. A lot of people who relate to your music. We talked about uh, loving her, holding you and loving her. We've talked about, what about the Blue Moon? Tell me about that song. Robert Byrne and Walt Alders wrote it, and Walt wrote Holding Her and Loving You, and Robert and him wrote Once in a Blue Moon. Is it a number one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, most of the stuff, well, I did some album cuts to pick the show up some, you know. But uh, that's one that was the big, was a big, uh, we had a video out on that too that turned out real good. 21 number one songs. All together. 18 in a row. Yeah. Did that amaze you? Were you amazed at your success? No, but I'll tell you what we did. I wrote and Starved to Death down there in Huntsville. And I got the writing end of it going. Finally, I started writing in '68, but I didn't get anything going until '74, really. And then uh, I was so busy trying to find song, songs, even though we, we was having number ones over here. I, I was going ahead and finding new stuff for the for the new stuff. And you're so busy doing that, uh, getting ahead of your career to keep it going, mm -hmm. that you don't have time to get caught up into the. The real fun part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you talk about the fun. But travel so much. You travel so much. I was so going to ask you: Do you think being on that bus is fun? Yeah, I can sleep better on the bus than I can at home. Can you really? Yeah. <laughs> With Kenny driving, if somebody's <laughs> feeling in, though, I'm sitting up for like this. Uh, let's talk about home. Who's at home waiting on you tonight? Carol and two girls. How old are you? Aaron's, Aaron's twelve and Cassie's eighteen. Can they sing? It's through the week. Oh boy. Can they sing? Yeah, but yes. they passed me to Dickens to get out there and get him a break. And I said, no, you got to work for the break. Uh -huh. when the, you don't get none of this handed to you. You got to earn it. Whose music do they like? Everybody's. Okay, who is your favorite artist? If you, had, if you went to a concert and you bought a ticket, whose ticket would you buy? Girl or boy? Either. I think I would, uh, I can't think of this girl's name. She's new and... She's young and innocent acting and always naive acting and everything, but she's got a great style. I like the songwriting into this business pretty much. Mm -hmm. What's her name? You know. Not Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she's just. So you agree it, with all it, the 18 year old boys in the world? Well, there's just something real cool about the and way she, she delivers write. herself. Yeah. And she and she and she really takes care of business. I'll put it that way. She don't mm -hmm. take nothing for granted with it. And I, I don't like her style pretty much. It's not my kind of music, but I mean, I like, I enjoy listening to her. Of course, Erin, uh, that little twelve-year-old of mine, she's got everything that <laughs> she does. Mm -hmm. All the every appearance she does on television, everything else. She said, "Look here, Dad." <laughs> Do you think Taylor Swift would find that a compliment? I would think so. I don't that know, you love but her I mean, music it, because it, you are such an awesome writer, and she is a great writer. Yeah, she's they. She's got it happening, and they work at it. Mm -hmm. Her and that group of people that plays music with her, man, it's, it's, it's just really tight, you know, and that's what you got to have. And that's what we did when I was recording back in the 80s, is we had a group of people together that understood the whole picture, you know, and I didn't have to do anything but get up there and sing, and I'd play them the demos, and man, they would pick up on all these different instruments and stuff, and it was just, it was real good, and, and you can tell that the people she's working with do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, your band was really good, and, and they you can are. see that y'all are very comfortable together. Brothers. <laughs> now, let's talk about a lady, Emmy Lou Harris. Yeah. You did a song with her. Yeah. Tell me the name of it. We Believe in Happy Endings. We Believe in Happy Endings. Johnny uh, Rodriguez had the first cut on that mm -hmm. song, and he did real well with it. And she uh, found out we was going to record together. She wanted to swore them down. We need to do that one. Mm -hmm. I said, well, Johnny Rod just had a hit on that not too long ago. I don't care. <laughs> it's my, my favorite song. <laughs> I said, okay. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you see Earl Thomas Conley with a happy ending? Yeah. Is your life, is it what you expected it to be, and have you fulfilled no, everything not, you wanted not, to it's do? No, it's expected to be, yeah, but it's there's still a lot of curves you run into. No matter, but So you got to have a real positive attitude mm -hmm. in this life, and I think that you create your own reality. Life is exactly what you make it. Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. if you have that in mind, you can do about anything mm -hmm. that you want to do bad or good. <laughs> when are you going to release something new? I got a deal working right now that's 
I got one deal that I've been working on for since 99. <laughs> That's uh, He's not coming through. He's telling my producer, Nelson Larkin. And, uh, but he is, because we got another deal we're working out with him. But this buddy of ours, as, as, uh, he said, I'm going to hear from him any day. I'm going to get this done. And uh, I said, well, I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. like and I'm waiting about, and waiting well, not, and waiting. Been, no, it ain't been very long, <laughs> but some of these deals takes a long time. Because we're, we're going to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for major labels. But What about writing? Are you still writing? I got a whole bunch written with my uh, engineer, Ronnie Reynolds, and several people around that I've written with over the years that have accumulated all these songs that most of them I still believe in. So. And if we get uh, in this process and, and I realize I don't have enough stuff, we'll, we'll write something again, another. What more about re-releasing Smoky Mountain Memories? Would you re-release because today... I have to cut it again. Yeah. Today we talked about the fact that that song, a 1974 well over there? song, 1974 song, and people would listen to it every day. Well, these boys in the long. band, I was going to say earlier, every one of them, are familiar with that song. I never even, I mean, we worked together for years and I didn't even know they knew the song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. And they said, yeah, it's my favorite song. Right, and, said, and re release kidding. that one because that is yeah. such an awesome song. I had to share that with y'all. Um, when you see that interview and you hear his music, you understand his life, he wrote tw and recorded 23 number one songs. And sadly, not very long after I did the interview with him, just a few years, he passed away from Alzheimer's. We have seen it happen to every single family. We all know somebody who has battled with that. We all know somebody who is facing that today. We all know somebody who is dealing with that. But as I sat there interviewing him, that's one of the few and the longest interviews of Earl Thomas Conley that's available. And um, I was so blessed. And it's because of Georgia Mountain Fair. So thank you immensely to Miss Hilda for allowing us to do that. You know, we didn't know that he had Alzheimer's in. He didn't know that he had Alzheimer's in. He had a fever of 104 the night we did that interview. His whole band had been on the road all week long with the full-blown flu. So it was absolutely crazy. But he sat down and he gave me that much time. And um, everybody knows Smoky Mountain Memories is my very, very favorite. It's my very favorite traveling song. It's my very favorite listen to when I'm feeling down in the dump song. It's just my favorite song. So. So um, check out the whole interview. We've got our Earl Thomas Conley is on YouTube. I think there have been 40,000 people check it out. But it is one of those interviews that I was so blessed, and it's because he came to these beautiful North Georgia mountains. Now, we're going to take you on another trip. Are we going to Heart of the Home right now? Or are we going to Heart of the Home or Charlie Pride? We're going we're gonna to do something, and this may be one of the old, old, old first Heart of the Homes. When I think about, y'all would not believe how many of these programs we still have that we can share and use. And this is one I just laughed because the lighting was terrible. It was so bad because we were in the dark kitchen. That's one thing about when you put up um, wood walls in your kitchen, even if it's country looking, it was a little bit dark and gloomy. So, um, and the lighting wasn't great. But starting Heart of the Home at Harris Farm was absolutely perfect. And Lori did a great job. And we had so much fun. And then we're going to share one of those early programs with you. I had a meatloaf sandwich in downtown Ball Ground this week. And I compared it to, it's nothing like my mama's sandwich because mama used a totally different kind of bread. But it was meatloaf and slaw and it brought back so many great memories. And then I thought about Myrna Denson. I had the program where she came and made her meatloaf on our program. And uh, everybody does meatloaf a little bit differently. But there's something about meatloaf, it just makes you feel like you've gone back to mama's, you've gone back to granny's. It's back to an easier time in life. And uh, I, I had somebody one day tell me, I just don't like meatloaf. And I said, do what? I said, that's a crime in America. You gotta like meatloaf. And everybody does it a little bit differently. But I can tell you, Chef Chris at Laura Mays in Ball Ground has nailed meatloaf. That boy has got it going on and he served it my way with slaw on the sandwich. And it was absolutely amazing. So I was so excited. Laura Mays officially opens tomorrow. She did a soft opening last week and um, I might say lunch there four times last week. So I had lots of spinach salad. I had a great sandwich one day, but every other day I had spinach salad and it was yummy, 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 yummy. 
and he makes this wonderful refreshing water that you've got to try and he changes it every day so you never know what flavor of water you're going to get but it's fantastic and Laura Mays is just right outside ball ground um, downtown proper right across from the library so okay here we go we're going to go to one of the first heart of the homes and uh, I hope it's the meatloaf recipe and visiting. Myrna and I have been friends for longer than we care to discuss. Um, 30 some odd years ago she used to eat in my mother's restaurant and had mother's famous meatloaf. Now tonight we're going to have my meatloaf um, but we're also going to make what mother would have made. Mother didn't use a recipe, didn't always use the same ingredients and my brother who thinks he never ate onions ate plenty of onions because mother put everything in the blender so we're going to show you how to feed your children without letting them know they're having onions they're having beets they're having salsa they're having anything you want to clean out of the refrigerator and put it in mother's meatloaf we're going to chop some loaf bread loaf bread now how old is this bread oh it's been in the refrigerator about two weeks okay doesn't hurt it a bit it's been refrigerated okay, we're going to cube, cube it and we have two bottles of almost gone ketchup and we're going to add a little bit of water to it because mother would clean out the refrigerator that would be and so never fun. throw anything away okay okay now we're going to put this in the blender now put the bread in first let's put some liquid in first okay. and all of a sudden we have two empty ketchup bottles mother would be so proud of me no she never sure. wasted anything. Oh, the meatloaf sandwiches were good. We could not wait to leave the law office to go get them at lunchtime. Right. I liked mine with slaw, onions, mayonnaise, and ketchup. Couldn't beat it. I liked mine. Mayonnaise on one slice of the bread and ketchup and mustard on the other. That sounds pretty good. Okay. I can pour some more in. Okay. Okay. And A little bit of A1 sauce. Okay. And if I had some Heinz 57, I'd throw it in there, but I didn't find any, so. How about one more egg? One more egg. And then we are gonna chop up the onion that my brother doesn't eat, but he's eating plenty of them in Mama's meatloaf. That means three, uh, three eggs. Right. Okay. okay. Now we're gonna have to add a little bit of water to this, and then Miss Marna is going to. Okay. Got it? Okay, Miss Myrna is going to put it on and puree it. Put puree, it puree, it puree. puree. Okay. I had to move. There you go. We are going to mix ground chuck and ground beef. And to that, we're going to add the mixture. I can't tell there's any onion in there, can you? I don't you? see the onion. And I don't believe Roy will ever know. And we'll not tell him. And we're gonna put it in the oven at 375 for about 45 to 55 minutes. It smells great. Ooh, it smells oh, it smells wonderful. I can't wait to have a meatloaf sandwich. Thanks for stopping by Harris Farm. Hope you'll come back to see us next week. See ya. Thank you, Miss Myrna. Thank it was a bomb. I me. love you so much. Thank you. All the recipes featured on Heart of the Home can be found in the Habitat for Humanity cookbook, which are on sale. Okay, meatloaf. I love meatloaf. There's nothing better in the world than meatloaf. I like steak, but I like ketchup on both of them. And I actually like barbecue sauce on meatloaf. Is that kind of weird? Well, I can't help it. I'm just that way. All right, guys, we have been so blessed. This weekend, um, a lot of people were in ball ground. It was packed and crazy, and we have some photos. We're just going to share a variety of photos. These are things from the 4th of July. They're from the walking park down in ball ground, and I want to share this information with y'all. If you come to ball ground and have lunch, you see that park right there? That is the best kept secret. Now that's in Rome, but in ball ground, and that is in Canton at the fireworks. And is that not the most precious sight you ever saw in your life? Um, Jasper Canton, Rome, Fannin County, Gilmer County, there's something for everybody to do when you just get out and you make the most of the moment, whether it be a short vacation, if you come and spend the weekend, just get out and do something. There's so many things and so many things in this area are free. The, the walking park down in downtown Ballground is a 50-acre walking park. 
It's a long walk, I might say, and it's downhill. And so uh, it's, you get a good workout, and it is just fantastic. But we want to welcome you to any of the towns that we serve and start down in Ball Ground. You know, don't skip Ball Ground and come on to Jasper. Start, and that's in downtown Jasper. Now, is that not the coolest car you ever saw? Oh, my gosh, those were sitting in front of the carriage house. And I had to get a picture of that. I'm like, holy cow. And that's one of Miss Laura May's famous, fabulous, beautiful sandwiches. That was Vicky's favorite sandwich. And it's just amazing. And those precious children were having lunch at Laura May's. And I said, do y'all mind if we take a picture? And they're just absolutely adorable. And uh, they were eating healthy, eating salads. And uh, it was just, it was a really... We've had, now that's down at the walking park again, and when you see, take your children down, take them down. It is a long walk, but it is a fantastic place, and it is, it's a gift from the city of Ball Ground. Basically, it's available to everybody to use, and it's a 50-acre walk, so it's really, really cool. And um, there you go. You can get down there, and, and this is before, um, I, I might tell you, as summer arose, so did a few snakes. So after, if you're walking, be careful, be cautious. We live right in town, and there was a snake killed right out beside the yard. So, uh, and it was Copperhead. So be careful. And I tell everybody that if you're out showing real estate now, if you're out walking property, if you're hiking, please be careful. Now, those pictures are over in Rome, and we had a wonderful, wonderful day in Rome. And honestly, their crepe myrtles are like gorgeous, absolute beautiful. Both sides of the road, they're just everywhere, and they were fantastic. So get out and take a vacation. And again, that's in Rome. And, you know, I think about my grandparents and the great memories we had there. I really wish I'd taken the time to go out to the, their old home place. But, um, and we were only about four miles from it, but didn't think about it. So one of those things, another day, another vacation, another trip. Okay, we're going to take you to a bit of the interview with Charlie Pride, and um, I was very, very blessed to be able to talk to Charlie Pride, visit with Charlie Pride, to get to know Charlie Pride. I've admired him, I've loved his music all of his life, never did I think. We saw him in concert, he was over 80 years old, and the man stood on stage and danced the whole show. I mean, he just back and forth on that stage, and, and his music was amazing. He was on top of his game and then COVID hit and um, sadly he lost a battle with COVID and the music industry lost one of the greatest. I know everybody has a special, a favorite Charlie Pride song. I think mine, uh, All I Have to Offer You Is Me is probably my favorite song. I loved all of his music but there were some that I just really, really identified with and um, to get to meet him was such a very, very big honor, and I'm so thankful again to Hilda Thomason. If she were not bringing these great artists up to Georgia Mountain Fair, we wouldn't have the opportunity, first of all, to see them at a great rate, because it's $12 to get into the fair, and that includes seeing these artists. So it was amazing, it was awesome, and I'm so very, very thankful for it. So here we go. We're gonna go visit now with Charlie Pride. one of my favorite locations to interview legends. Today I am with a true legend. I've waited a lifetime to interview Charlie Pride. He has 36 number one hits. He is one of those guys I listen to all of my long life. <laughs> I am now 63 years old and I'm happy to say all the periods of my life there was never a time that your music wasn't touching me. Thank you for doing this interview, and thank you for fighting the Atlanta traffic to get here because you fought the traffic, didn't you, honey? <laughs> every bump, every bump, every time we, every time we decide maybe we ought to go this, though we, it, it goes like this for a little while. It's like two miles up would be workload. <laughs> no way around the Atlanta traffic. Um, you are a little bit older than me, and we, we're not going to disclose your age, but you're a little bit older than me. I'm still very active and on the go all the time, and it really does help keep my mind focused. Your mind is on so much. I mean, I'm sitting here listening to your interview. You love baseball. You love traveling. You love performing. You love your grandchildren. And I understand that you're going to leave here tonight and go back to Texas to do some things with your family. Charlie, how do you do all of this? Well, I, uh, what, well, I don't know, but I, I, I just, I just, I just do it. I mean, I don't, I try not to get all, 
sideways about anything and I mm-hmm. just if it's going to be we're going to be we're going to do it we're going to do it we're going to do it like right. I'm, I'm late here but we're still doing this what we're supposed right. to do. I'm supposed to do this what I'm supposed to what I was supposed to do by, prior to getting here but then but I've got to go pretty soon I'm going to have to uh, dress and go do the show right, right. but I'm not going to I'm not going to squinch and scrunch about it I mean I'm going to do both you of gotta them you got to do it you got to do it so I, I don't know other than I just try to do it mm-hmm. uh, did you ever wake up one morning and say, there's one more thing I want to do? Is there anything that you haven't accomplished you would like to accomplish? Oh, yeah. There's so many things. I, I like to make the world a little bit better place uh, than I've already done. I think I've done a pretty good job because I've got so, so job. many fans that love my singing and have treated me so fine and kind. Uh, but it's it's always another plateau. I mean, it's uh, and I figure the Lord let me stay here for some reason. And I mentioned it earlier that I don't. Th- I think it's it's better to just get up and lay down, get up and eat and sleep and lay down. I think it's always felt that there was something more to it than just that. Right. Um, I would think you were an overachiever because you don't just do. You do, then you overdo. Have you passed it on to your children? Well, I, I tried, but I don't. I don't know whether I've done it. <laughs> and I, I, I've spoiled a lot of, uh, especially my Surely daughter. Surely not. <laughs> Angela, you have a daughter named oh, Angela. Oh, boy, she, she, she wears me out. Yeah, I had a daughter named Angela, and a very special young lady. So. Yeah, well, she's special, but the only little thing on that, we're going to do right now. <laughs> He's trying to get my attention, isn't he? <laughs> He'll tell you right quick, I don't usually pay attention to him, but I, I can tell you something about your music. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know anybody who wasn't touched by some of it. And and we were talking yesterday about our favorite songs. And we all had such different ideas of favorite songs. My favorite is All I Have to Offer You Is Me. That was my first number one. I absolutely fell in love with that song and I wore it out playing it. Does Charlie Pride have a favorite song? Is yes. there one? Which one? Yes. The one I'm singing at the moment. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and, and that's that, pretty cool. That's not just saying I'm making an answer, mm-hmm. but it's the truth. For example, uh, in uh, in in we we go to Ireland and we have to kind of change us well, not change but in, interchange songs. Mm-hmm. For for example, Crystal Chandeliers was never a single, but I've been doing it in my show all these years. Mm-hmm. When I go to they, they released it in Ireland as a single about two or three times. I get ready to do that song. It's oh the crystal. <sighs> walls tremble. So, oh, wow. so, so, so I'm, I'm loving doing that song. Yeah. I go to Sher- uh, Australia and New Zealand. They got, uh, oh, the wings of a song. <laughs> so, so I love singing it when I'm singing that. Yeah. So whatever I'm singing at the moment wasn't just said out of uh, trying to be smith but about it. Mm-hmm. It's the truth. When That's I'm, it. And I've, I've been blessed with being able to do songs from albums that people love more than they do what you said a moment ago what mm-hmm. you like all have to offer you me was my first number one single because there's people that go in that album and they pick, pick this one out and they pick that one out right and the reasons for that is jack clement because he said no we're not gonna go put all i have to offer you to me and then do uh uh kiss an angel good morning just throw a whole bunch of songs around we're gonna do songs that everything we do we think that could be a single Mm-hmm. If it's an A song, we do make it a double A. If it's a double A, make it a triple A. Uh-huh. We it. So we just don't do songs to just throw them in to fill up the album. Right. So I think that's why I sold. I have sold so many albums. Uh, I only had one million southern single, and that was Kissing Angel Good Morning. But I've sold, I don't know how many albums. How many couples do you think started their romance with that song on the radio? Oh, that's off his name? Oh, no, Kissing Angel Good Morning. I know what women Both feel. Are. Yeah, well, I know what women feel when they're listening to that song. I, know I what just that. received an email from a lady who says, "My broke. We were going to school, high school, and I love. We love one another, but we broke up, and we came back together. Now we've been married 35 years. <laughs> Your song, All I've Offered You Is Me, brought us back together. Absolutely. Okay, okay, absolutely." We're going to take a break for just a minute because we're going to have to end this quickly because you were running late and my cameraman's giving me a signal and I don't know yeah, what he my, means. My so we're going to find out. Okay, we're going to take a break for just a second. One of the main men of all time in the Country Music Hall of Fame. That's right, Superlatives. Yes. How about a hand, ladies and gentlemen? Wait. Yay! 
Okay, guys, you're gonna get to see, I love Charlie Pride. You're gonna get to see this on YouTube. It will be posted today. Um, the idea that we did get to interview him and then not long after that, he passed away too. Oh my gosh, I'm so thankful for these memories. I'm so thankful that Miss Hilda and Georgia Mountain Fair made that possible. So please book a concert with her, stay at her campground with her, go to the events that she has and support the Georgia Mountain Fair. They bring in more tourist dollars than anything in the state of Georgia, I would say. When you come up to North Georgia, there's nothing we have that compares to it. So please continue to support that. Last year being off had to be very, very tough on them, but we say thank you, Miss Hilda, and welcome back. Yay, we're excited. Okay, it's time for me to get out of here. I gotta go walk some land right quick, and I gotta see if I can dodge the snakes as I'm a walking the land, but it's gonna be a good day. I hope you have a great day. I will see you again tomorrow. Miss Susan Liebert is gonna be with us, and she has written a song about loving your pets and I can't wait to share that with you so we will be with Susan and uh, she'll get to share that music I look forward to seeing you again soon y'all have a great day bye you got me looking on the ground.